Welcome to our latest video, most popular US business entity types. I've been advising high net worth individuals for a long time. The high net worth individuals need to set up business entities for a variety of reasons. Some are starting a business, others are making an investment, some want to own a yacht or a jet. The reasons are literally limitless. One of the things that I've learned advising high net worth individuals over the past 20 years is that just like the rest of us, they don't always think or get advice before they act, which often leads to expensive consequences. Or they do get advice, but from the wrong person. Listen, different business entities are useful in different situations. Using the right entity in the right situation is key to success. I hope that this video helps people understand the different entity types, their characteristics, how they're taxed, their advantages and disadvantages, so that they can make better decisions, protect their assets, and lower their taxes. Let's get into it. So the first entity we're gonna talk about is the limited liability company. One of the advantages of a limited liability company, like the name suggests, is limited liability. Meaning, if the LLC gets sued, the LLC's assets are at risk, but the members, the owners of the LLC's personal assets will not be at risk. That's obviously a huge advantage because otherwise you would have unlimited liability, meaning if you were sued, everything you own is at risk. And so the LLC kind of acts like a blocker so that only the LLC's assets are at risk and not your personal assets. You could also separate management and ownership, meaning that the owners can appoint third party managers to manage the LLC's business. The owners themselves don't have to manage it. This is often a very advantageous tool when running a business. You also have great flexibility in drafting the provisions of the operating agreement, which is the governing document of an LLC. You also have flexible taxation with an LLC. A US LLC can essentially be treated three different ways for US tax purposes. The default treatment of an LLC with a single owner is a disregarded entity, meaning that the LLC for tax purposes does not exist. All the LLC's income, loss, assets, whatever, is reported on the tax return of the LLC's single owner. So that's a huge advantage that you can get for a sole proprietor, for example. You can get the tax treatment of being a sole proprietor, but with limited liability. The, the LLC doesn't even need to file an income tax return, which is another added benefit which reduces cost. Now, the default treatment of an LLC with more than one owner is that of a partnership. Now, partnerships are not taxable entities, but they do need to file a tax return, Form 1065. And what 1065 does is 1065 shows the partnership's income and expenses and then divvies that up between the partners so they can report and pay tax on it individually on their tax returns. And finally, a domestic LLC can elect to be treated as a corporation for tax purposes, in which case it would pay corporate income tax of 21% plus any state income taxes, and shareholders would pay taxes on distributions as dividends. Now the disadvantages of an LLC is it obviously adds a little bit of additional complexity and cost and formation, because you have to formally form it with the state, you have ongoing fees if it's taxed as, taxed as a corporation or a partnership, or will need to file a tax return. The other problem is foreign countries don't always recognize the tax classification of US LLCs. So for example, even though it might be a disregarded entity in the United States, it may be treated as a corporation by another country, which can lead to some negative tax consequences in that other country. So if you're a foreign resident or national and you're setting up a US LLC or if you're a foreign company setting up a US LLC, you definitely want to check how it's going to be classified in your home country. Another popular business entity type is the corporation. Now its advantages, much like the LLC, is it has limited liability. You can separate ownership and management. Its income is not subject to self-employment tax like the owners of an LLC taxed as a disregarded entity or partnership maybe. You also have a low federal income tax rate of 21%. And the shares of a corporation, absent any sort of shareholder agreement, will be freely transferable. Some of the disadvantages of a corporation are its corporate governance can be rigid, right? You need to hold meetings, you need to have meeting minutes, you need to have resolutions, things like that. You have additional complexity and cost in its formation because like an LLC, you have to formally incorporate it with a Secretary of State in the United States. 
A separate tax return is required. You have to comply with certain corporate formalities. You have potential double taxation as well, right? Because the corporation has to pay its income tax and then the shareholders have to pay income tax on the dividends that they receive. And if the corporation generates a loss, the shareholders don't get to deduct that on their tax return as you would with an LLC that was taxed as a disregarded entity or a partnership. So an S corporation is kind of like a cross between a partnership and a corporation. Like a partnership, it doesn't have any entity level tax. Its income and losses pass through pro rata to its shareholders who pay tax on any income and deduct any losses. The S corporation itself doesn't pay any taxes. That is a big benefit that you eliminate the double taxation. It also has the potential to provide significant self-employment tax savings, which is a huge benefit over an LLC tax as a partnership, for example. The shares can be freely transferable, absent any shareholder agreement. Now, there are some limitations to S corporations. For example, it's limited to 100 shareholders. You can only have one class of stock. Shareholders must be U.S. individuals. They cannot be foreigners and it does have to file a separate tax return, Form 1120S. Now we're gonna talk about limited partnerships. Now limited partnerships used to be a lot more popular before LLCs came into effect. And the reason being is, with a limited partnership, those who control it, called the general partners, have unlimited liability, whereas the limited partners have limited liability. And the way you used to kind of work around this is you would use a corporation as the general partner, which itself had limited liability, and then you would have the limited partnership interest, which had limited liability anyway. Now with the LLC, everybody can have limited liability and partnership tax treatment. So limited partnerships aren't as popular, but they still have their uses. I'm gonna cover them in here. So one of the things, because you have the general partner, limited partner classifications, you can separate control and management. The general partner manages it while the limited partners are simply investors. Like an LLC tax as a partnership or an S corporation, there is no entity level tax. All of the partnerships, income and losses flow through to the partners who report and pay tax on any income or deduct any losses. You have a great flexibility in drafting the provisions of the limited partnership agreements. Losses from the limited partnership will be available to offset other income. Uh, you do have additional complexity and cost and formation because limited partnerships do need to be formed with the Secretary of State. You have unlimited liability for the general partners. Like I said, you can work around that by using a corporation or an LLC as a general partner. You have complex partnership accounting. You have complex tax rules. A separate tax is required. Form 1065, just like an LLC tax as a partnership. Income can be subject to self-employment tax, especially the general partners who materially participate in the management of the partnership. And partnership interests are generally not easily transferable. There's usually restrictions within the limited partnership agreement on who can be partners and the process for transferring partnership interests is usually pretty restrictive. Finally, we're gonna talk about trusts. Now trusts are usually not used for business, they're usually used for estate planning. Now some of the advantages of trust is assets placed in trust will avoid the costly and lengthy probate pro process in the event of the settler's death. You can get asset protection, so they offer limited liability. You can achieve your estate planning goals. You can achieve privacy. You can separate management and ownership, and you have a lot of flexibility in how you draft the trust agreement. Now, the disadvantage of a trust, if you want to do it right, they can be complex and costly to set up. You need extensive tax planning to be able to maximize the tax benefits you get by setting up a trust. Trusts do have some fairly complex accounting rules and tax rules that you'll need to comply with. A separate tax return generally is gonna be re required. Transfers of properties to trusts can result in gift tax. That goes into the tax planning. You need to, to figure that out before you start transferring assets into a trust. For income that is not distributed from the trust, the trust is subject to compressed tax rates, meaning you reach the highest tax rate at a relatively low level of income. I sure hope you found this video informational. Our job here at Esquire Group is to help our clients set up the right type of entity for their specific situation. To do so, our clients need to understand the differences between the different business entity types, their characteristics, advantages, disadvantages, tax treatment, etc., so that they can form the entity that is most advantageous to them. We've been helping clients set up U.S. entities for almost 20 years. 
If you have any questions or you need help setting up a U.S. entity, just reach out to us. You can shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com or visit us on the web at www.esquiregroup.com. Thank you.